Hi guys, it's Nick, the ASMR nerd, and welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Now, if you've listened to much of my other content on this channel, or perhaps made it out to one of my Twitch streams, or really listened to much ASMR content of any kind at all, you have almost certainly heard a Blue Yeti microphone. The Blue Yeti is exceptionally popular amongst ASMR creators, but not just with ASMR artists. It's popular with podcasters, with uh, streamers, with uh, vocalists, but pretty much anybody who needs to easily get a quality recording at their home computer. And the Yeti is so dominant in this space because it excels at three important things. It has exceptional value, it has exceptional quality, and it has exceptional versatility. And any would-be competitor, would-be challenger for the Yeti's throne is going to have to meet or beat the Blue Yeti in all three of these areas, and that is no small task. Wait, what? Could it be? Do my eyes deceive me? You know what I just saw over there between the trees? I just saw a Behringer Bigfoot. Yes, my friends, the Behringer Bigfoot. Behringer is a well-established and well-regarded manufacturer of audio equipment. They make things like audio interfaces, like uh, audio mixers, like microphones. And the Bigfoot is their new entry into the market segment occupied by the Yeti, the sort of all-in-one home studio solution market segment. And on paper, at least, the Bigfoot seems to match the Yeti pound for pound. It has easy plug-and-play utility thanks to its USB interface. Uh, it has four pickup patterns, including the all-important stereo pickup pattern that matters so much for ASMR creators. Uh, it touts excellent audio quality, excellent build quality, um, uh, live monitoring headphone jack with zero latency, all these kinds of these desirable features, and it does it for significantly less than the Blue Yeti. That's the kicker. The Blue Yeti's MSRP suggested retail price is 130 US dollars. The Bigfoot comes in at a mere 100 US dollars, undercutting the Yeti by 30 bucks. That's pretty significant, but that's all on paper of course. So to really evaluate the Behringer Bigfoot, we're going to have to see it. We're going to have to hear it for ourselves. And to that end, Behringer sent over a Bigfoot for us to take a look at here today. And that is precisely what we are going to do right after this message from this video's sponsor, Yod. Today's video is sponsored by Yod, makers of fine wood watches. You may remember that some time ago, I reviewed the Dover automatic wristwatch from Yod and found it to be both a reliable timepiece and a unique showpiece for your wrist. Today, I'd like to show you the newly overhauled version of this model the Dover 2. The Dover 2 is thinner, yet significantly more durable, thanks to its innovative steel core endoskeleton that fuses an exotic wood exterior with a durable steel core, producing a timepiece that's 50 times stronger and three times more water resistant than wood alone. Yod has also updated the aesthetics, 
slimming down the outer bezel while enlarging the model's characteristically bold dial. Meanwhile, the see-through skeleton design has been retained to exhibit the details of the 21 Jewel Seagull TY2807 self-winding automatic movement, whether observed through the front or the rear sapphire crystal watch glass. The watch you see here is the Coso and Gunmetal model. The Dover 2 is also available with Burmese paddock, sandalwood, walnut, and bocot wood. The Dover 2 ships in a cedarwood humidor to protect your timepiece and provide a luxurious presentation. When shopping with Yod, you can rest easy with their one-year warranty, hassle-free returns, and the knowledge that all of their exotic hardwoods are sustainably reclaimed from furniture remnants and therefore do not contribute to deforestation of threatened species. You can check out the Dover 2 and many more beautiful wood watches at the link in the video description below. A portion of any purchases made via the Yod store link down in the video description will come back to support the channel, which of course I appreciate very much, but perhaps even more excitingly, I am giving you the opportunity to win a Yod watch, a Dover 2 of your very own. All you have to do is click on the contest link down in the video description, provide the information required on the contest entry form on Yod's website, and you are entered to win a Yod watch. Not only that, but if you don't win, you still receive $50 off a Yod watch of your choice. So all you have to do is head on down into the video description, clicky clicky, the linky linky, enter the contest, and away you go. I wish you guys the best of luck. Now, without further ado, let's get on to taking a closer look at the Behringer Bigfoot. And here we have the Behringer Bigfoot in box. It's a pretty simple box, mostly white. Got a picture, an image of the microphone, front and center, has a name up here, Bigfoot, all-in-one USB studio condenser microphone. You've got the Behringer logo down the bottom right corner and a QR code down the bottom left that says learn. Presumably that will uh, take you to the product page. Other than that, just a stripe of color right up here at the top to uh, match the color of the Behringer logo. That's pretty much all we got. Look at the sides. Nothing here except the product name and description again and the Behringer logo. The side is the same as the other side. completely identical. Finally, this side is the same as the flip side, except we've got a sticker here with uh, a bit of product information, quite a bit of Chinese on it. It does, however, in English, say Bigfoot. 
we've got some certification logos here and yeah some UPC codes and things also dimensions and weight okay anything on the bottom nope nothing there how about on the top well we've got something on the top On the top here, we've got, once again, the name and the Behringer logo, Behringer, pardon me. The whole surface is kind of this, like, matte white. It's like kind of soft touch. A little bit. Okay, well, that's it for the outside. Let's, uh, let's open it up, shall we? like new product. <laughs> A little bit plasticky. So on top here we're met with uh, cardboard. As a matter of fact, I think we've got a box within a box situation. So Maybe I will lay it down so that I can pull it out more easily. Just an outer packaging box. So everything is in this completely nondescript white box, which opens. Well, here's a seal right here. You can probably see. So let's uh, let's just cut that seal. The smell of styrofoam packing materials. <laughs> okay, so here, as you can see, we've got uh, the goods. We've got a Behringer sticker, along with a, a user guide, it looks like. USB cable. Take a look at those again in a second. Closer look. Silica desiccant. Do not eat. <laughs> Classic. And then the main event, which is situated within. Very well protected. In all this styrofoam. Lots and lots of styrofoam. So let's, uh, well, you know what, let's 
pull it out. Start guide. In a variety of languages. Let's just see what they have to say in here quickly, shall we? Oh, oh it's got all the warnings in every language. And then, where did we get to? Here we go. Quick start guide shows us controls and the various parts of the microphone. Nothing too fancy there. Pretty straightforward. Other languages. Back to getting started. Plugging it into your PC, recording with it, all that good stuff. Configuring the driver, here we go. Interesting stuff. Specifications. This is what I was looking for. So you can see that. Uh, it has a three capsule array, uh, each at 14 millimeter diameter. Uh, frequency range is claimed to be 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which is very typical. Sample rate is either 44.1 kilohertz or 48, both of which are typical uh, sample rates for, you know, modern recording, anything that you're going to put online, pretty much anything on YouTube. Uh, and the uh, bit rate is 16-bit. There is no 24-bit support, which is a bit disappointing, but that is how it is. And then some other uh, stats about the headphone amplifier, connectors, these sorts of things. So I suspect all this information can also be found on... Uh, Behringer's website. Don't know if you can even read that. Hopefully. Alright, let's put that aside. Quick peek at the USB cable. forward, just black, vinyl, PVC, coated, just, uh, just twist tie there holding it together, no cable ties or anything, it is uh, actually kind of stiff, you can hear it probably as it unstiffens, 
but also uh, fairly uh, thick and hefty feeling. More so than your typical USB cable, I would say. On one end, we've got USB type A to plug into your PC or Mac. And on the other end, we've got a mini B connector, I think this is. Mini USB B, I think. Which is an interesting choice, honestly, but it seems very typical of uh, a lot of microphones for one reason or another. I don't know why that is a, a typical connector for USB microphones. Okay, and it's, you know, actually it's pretty long. Um, I would estimate three and a half feet, maybe. So, okay. Finally, we get to the microphone itself. Obviously, and it's actually upside down right now the microphone itself So this rotates out like so To be right side up Which means that if you want it to travel with this mic for one reason or another It does fold back on itself like this which makes it nice and compact if not light <laughs> It's definitely not light, but while we have it upside down here. We can take a look at our connectivity and things like that. So here's our, our mini USB connector. Here's our headphone jack, which provides real-time uh, zero latency monitoring, as well as presumably, uh, you know, output from the PC. Um, we've got our little barcode and serial number and some certifications there. And of course, we've got our mount here uh, for sticking it on a uh, microphone stand, a shock mount, uh, what have you, if you don't want to use the included stand. Uh, it also comes with an adapter, it would seem. Uh, yeah, a little threaded adapter. So, uh, I don't know precisely what the, the inch measurements of these uh, mounting threaded mounts are, but they're, they'll be industry standard. And then the threaded adapter for getting it down to something smaller, if you so desire, or if that's what your hardware calls for. We'll just leave that for now. Okay. So let's pop it out here. The base actually makes a very pleasant noise. Uh, it's very solid. It feels like a giant chunk of die cast metal, which is what it is, I imagine. So uh, it is attached to this uh, bracket by a pair of screws here. Maybe you can see or not. It's a little dark. Hopefully you can sort of see that. Feels quite uh, well attached. Uh, the underside of the base has a a ring of foam padding to prevent slippage and uh, prevent scratching of your desk surface. And then we get to the microphone itself. Let's hold it in such a way that you can see it. There we go. Uh, it is attached with these two uh, knobs. <laughs> There's got to be a better word for these. Uh, these are made of plastic. Uh, whereas everything else pretty much is made of metal. The stand, the base, sort of like a telephone, like an old style telephone. <laughs> uh, the 
body of the Bigfoot itself and the grill, which protects the capsules. Also made of shiny metal. Uh, the body is cylindrical, as you can see, uh, and uh, it tapers a little bit near the bottom, but not too much. Same at the top, it tapers a little bit at the top, but then we have this sort of flat top. In fact, it's kind of symmetrical, isn't it? Pretty much in terms of its shape, pretty close from top to bottom. All right, let's look at our controls here. So we have here our headphones volume right on the front. That turns quite easily. Feels pretty nice. Smooth action. We have our quick mute button, which has a nice chunk to it, although it does feel a wee bit mushy but it will get the job done. It has an LED embedded in it, which will look very familiar to those of you who've used a Blue Yeti. In fact, this whole setup will. Uh, the LED turns red when it's muted, so that you know. We turn it around, and we've got, Again, some very familiar controls. We've got a gain knob at the top here, which will control the, the input volume of your microphone, essentially, as opposed to the, this one over here, which controls the output volume of headphones that you might have attached, plugged in. And then, of course, the most important, we have our, our pattern select dial here. And this is how you, you select what, what configuration of uh, the three capsules underneath the grill here are going to be used. And it allows you to get four different recording modes. So uh, we've got our standard stereo mode, which is the first one there. And that'll get you a fairly realistic image, a left ear and a right ear, like what you're hearing now, more or less. Uh, our next one there is the omnidirectional mode. The omnidirectional mode will record evenly from every side of the microphone and mix it down to, I think, a mono signal. Uh, so if you want to pick up an entire room or a bunch of people sitting around a table, it's a good way to do that. The next one that looks like a little heart is the cardioid mode, and this records out the front of the microphone, just out the front of the microphone. Um, and so that would be this side, I suppose, here. I think it would make sense that the side with the mute control on it would be the front. I'll have to double check that when I plug it in, of course, but, um, and it'll reject sound from the rear. Uh, it'll also produce just a mono signal. Uh, this is really great for singing or voiceovers or anything where you don't need a sense of space or, you know, 3D positioning. Uh, you just want a nice, clean, uh, single channel signal uh, that, you know, rejects a lot of room noise. It's, it's good for voiceover and narration and, and lots of vocal work because it doesn't pick up nearly as much of the room echo or room noise as does the omnidirectional or the the stereo mode for that matter. And this final mode here is the uh, opposed mode, where it will record evenly from the front and the back of the microphone. Uh, this is great if you have two people sitting uh, across from each other, say, at a table. You want to record one person on one side and one person on the other. So, uh, quite a few versatile options there. Uh, the mode selector feels nice and chunky, good click to it. Um, and again, these options will be very familiar to anybody who has used the Yeti. So, uh, that's really what we have to see here. That's, that's what we've got. 
um, we've got this nice chrome accent ring around the, uh, the grill here. Overall, it feels very hefty, very sturdy, uh, and quite well built. Um, certainly I have no concerns about the uh, physical construction or build quality of this microphone. And I do like the fact that it easily flips around and tucks into its own base so that if you want, you can transport it easily. So, uh, I suppose what is next is testing this thing out. Uh, and uh, because it is very clearly aimed at products like the Blue Yeti, that's how I'm going to be testing it out against my Blue Yeti. Uh, we're going to test it out and see how it compares for, for voices, for whispering, for soft speaking, for a handful of other triggers. I'm very curious about how it picks up subtle sounds and about uh, how it um, shapes uh, voices, you know, if, if at all, if it has a fairly flat frequency uh, response or if it's uh, a little bit more shaped, a little bit more flattering, you know, that'll be interesting to hear. Um, and of course the stereo image, how uh, wide does that stereo image sound? Do you get a really good ear-to-ear -ear effect or not? That is what we're going to be checking out next. So, without further ado, Let's get on with testing the Behringer Bigfoot. And here we have the Bigfoot plugged in and mounted on my radius shock mount, which I actually usually use for my Blue Yeti, because uh, when I'm sitting at my PC like this, I'm typically using my Yeti. That's been my you know, my go-to workhorse for many years now. This view is probably not so familiar to people who only watch my YouTube videos, but uh, those of you who make it out to my Twitch streams, twitch.tv slash the ASMR nerd, by the way, if you'd like to join us, uh, this is very familiar. This is what you're used to seeing. So uh, I've actually got the Bigfoot here mounted on the radius shock mount, which is just out of frame, just below the frame here. And then it's all suspended on my Rode PSA-1 boom arm. And this is, I think, a very typical kind of setup for what this microphone would be used for by many people. Uh, this is a USB mic. It's intended for use at a computer, more or less. Now, if you are hearing uh, some faint white noise in the background, that's probably my PC. Uh, I, I do have a very quiet PC, but it's probably loud enough, and this microphone is probably sensitive enough uh, with low enough self-noise that the PC will bring up the noise floor. So don't uh, read too much into the noise floor that you're hearing right now. It's, it's hard for me to know if some of it's coming from the mic itself or from the PC, but ultimately, as long as it's not too distracting, it doesn't much matter either way. Now, as you've probably noticed, I have the Bigfoot set to its stereo mode, which is giving this lovely ear-to-ear, ear-to-ear, effect. I'm trying very hard not to breathe on the microphone because, uh, as you can see, it doesn't come with any kind of windscreen or um, any kind of uh, a pop filter or anything. Usually, with my Yeti, I do use a windscreen and a pop filter, but today we're just going with the naked microphones so that you can hear uh, exactly what they sound like without anything obscuring them. Uh, and uh, to that point, uh, I will also not be doing any post-processing to the audio that you're hearing right now or in the subsequent 
sound tests. And uh, normally, for most of my audio, I do some very subtle uh, EQ, uh, a little noise reduction, uh, high, high, high pass filter, these kinds of things, uh, just to polish it a little bit. But uh, you're just going to be hearing totally raw audio coming out of uh, the mic right now. Uh, this is being recorded at 48 uh, kilohertz, and uh, which is the, the highest sample rate that this microphone can do, and it is matched by the Blue Yeti, uh, and at 16-bit um, bit depth, which again is matched by the Yeti, and uh, is the highest that this one can go. So this is kind of a best case scenario for these microphones in that regard. So um, I've got just a handful of items over here that I think make nice sounds. So I'm just going to go through a series of them, going ear to ear with some traditional kind of ASMR trigger sounds. And you guys can uh, evaluate or judge uh, how you think this Bigfoot performs. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same triggers and do a series of A, B blind tests where I actually cover up the microphone here so you can't see what mic I'm speaking into and I'm going to, or, or I'm, you know, I'm using to record. And I'm going to use both the Bigfoot and the Yeti and I'll do a series of sounds with each of them and then I'll see if you can differentiate between them, just for fun, just for fun. If you can, it would be interesting to know whether you think the Yeti or the Bigfoot sounds better. And if you can't differentiate between them, well, that's very interesting as well. So, uh, but for starters, let's just, let's let our ears get accustomed to what the Bigfoot sounds like, how it handles a lot of these very subtle ASMR trigger sounds. Also though, actually before we do that, just for point of reference, I do have my my Blue Yeti right here, and I'm going to just hold it up right next to uh, the Bigfoot, so you can see that they are pretty much the same size. They are they are very uh, similar in size in terms of the um, the radius of the uh, the sort of cylinder. They're about the same size. The the height from top to bottom. They're uh, very comparable in their size. So just for a comparison. Okay, let's get some sounds going on. Let's start with. This lovely lid to our cedar humidor box uh, from our uh, our Yod watch, uh, which is the sponsor for today's video. It makes very nice subtle sounds.
things to listen for as we go through these triggers. Things to listen for are um, how the microphone handles uh, sort of harsher tones. Do they sound very harsh and sibilant? Or do they sound relatively tamed and natural? Is there any uh, sort of audible distortion, um, especially in those higher registers? Um, how is the stereo separation from one ear to the other ear? Do we get a good and convincing sense of separation and, and 3D sound? Next, the big fluffy. This is what they call a, a dead cat type windscreen. I've never liked the phrase, but that's what they call them. This one sounds very subtle. Okay, let's go for the Xbox One controller next. This is not a Series X or Series S controller. This is the old Xbox One controller, but it still works, which is great. And for the last trigger, let's go with uh, this, this fluffy little, not fluffy, it's actually kind of rough. It's like a little, a little burlapy pillow that the uh, watch comes uh, presented on.
Okay, well, you've now heard a selection of sounds. You heard me speaking, of course, into the mic. Uh, I guess, you know, what we haven't really done is whispering. How does this sound with whispers, whispers? now is, uh, like I said, now that you've had a chance to hear the Bigfoot and sort of acclimate to the way it sounds, I'm going to cover up the microphone and you guys aren't going to be able to tell which microphone it is visually. Uh, I'll just have a big A and then a big B over the microphone. I'll do a series of triggers with mic A, whichever one that might be. And I'll do a series of triggers with mic B. And then after I've done those, I'll give you guys an opportunity to guess which microphone is the Bigfoot and which is the Yeti. So let's give that a shot. this microphone, whichever one this might be, is whispering. Just some more whispering. It is such a popular use case, or a common use case for ASMR microphones, isn't it? So, it does make sense to 
whisper a bit and for you guys to decide if you can tell the difference between the two. I don't know what to whisper about. <laughs> I just realized as I'm talking here, I'm like, I, I ran out of things to say. That's okay. I'll just whisper about nothing or, but I don't know, whatever. Why don't I whisper about how you guys should come check out what I do over on Twitch, <laughs> twitch.tv slash the ASMR nerd, which is where I hang out on Thursday and Saturday nights, Pacific time in the evening. Oh, you guys got a little bonus. I don't know if you heard, but my, my tummy just growled. Bonus triggers. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's check out the next mic. Discord, 
uh, while I've been recording podcasts and things like that, so, um, and generally, um, people haven't noticed the difference, it seems, although on the last, uh, stream, uh, a few people did say they thought it sounded a little bit different after I pointed out that I was using the Bigfoot and not uh, my regular Yeti, so, um, Anyway, I will be listening to these recordings to evaluate, um, just as you are right now. Anyway, that was a bit of a longer whisper than, uh, than with the, the previous microphone, whichever one that was. So, uh, I guess we better get on with things. And we are back. So, what did you guys think? Were you able to tell the difference? between the two microphones, do you think you know which one was the Bigfoot and which one was the Yeti? Take a moment to think about it. Think about it. You've probably already formed an opinion. So, was the Bigfoot microphone A or microphone B? Drum roll, please. And Bigfoot was microphone A. Microphone B was my trusty old workhorse, the Blue Yeti. So, I would be very curious to know if you were able to tell the difference between the two microphones, and if so, do you have a preference for one over the other? Maybe in terms of sound quality, maybe in terms of stereo separation, the ear-to-earness, if you will. I'd be very curious to know, so please feel free to leave a comment down below uh, and let me know if you were able to tell them apart and what you think uh, about the Bigfoot and its sound specifically. Okay, well, uh, we've had an opportunity to test out the microphone here. So let's head on over uh, back to the old <laughs> recording closet and uh, I'm going to run down my pros and cons for the Bigfoot before giving you my final verdict. So we've had the opportunity to take a close look at the Behringer Bigfoot with our unboxing. We've had a chance to test it out with all kinds of different ASMR triggers and sounds and compare it head to head against the dominant blue Yeti. There's just one more thing I would like for you to hear, and that is the cardioid pickup pattern mode on the Behringer Bigfoot, because this is a mode that's going to be used by lots of people, especially if you're recording podcasts or vocals or that kind of thing. And I didn't do that in the little comparison that we just did. So I'm going to uh, play a couple of samples for you now. The first will be with the Bigfoot. The second will be with the Yeti, also in its cardioid mode. So you can make that comparison and hear it for yourself. This is what the Bigfoot sounds like on its cardioid pickup pattern. I wanted you to hear this because this pickup pattern will commonly be used for podcasting, for recording vocals and music, these kinds of things. It can even be good for ASMR videos. I use it frequently for my gameplay uh, video voiceovers if I don't need that ear-to-ear stereo effect. So I wanted you to hear this so you know what it sounds like, uh, how it shapes the voice, colors the sound, these kinds of things. Next up, you're going to hear it compared to the cardioid mode on the Yeti. And now you're hearing the cardioid output mode on the blue Yeti. This is the microphone you've heard many, many times on this channel before and many others, no doubt. Uh, for what it's worth, as I mentioned earlier, neither of these recordings will have any post-processing done to them. This is simply the raw audio coming out of the microphone. So hopefully this makes for 
a good comparison. And with that done, it's time to run down the pros and the cons of Behringer's Bigfoot microphone. And we like to start positive around here, so let's start with the pros. There's actually quite a few of them for this microphone. The first is that this thing is built like a tank. It's got a solid die-cast metal body. Its build quality easily matches that of the Blue Yeti. Similarly, the Bigfoot has excellent sound quality. Uh, it has a very pleasing sound to it. It doesn't color the voice in any strong way, but the clarity is very good. Uh, the sensitivity is very good. I would even go so far as to say that the vocal clarity is a little bit above that of the Blue Yeti. The Blue Yeti has uh, a very strong boost in the low end, which gives voices a lot of presence, a lot of richness, but it can contribute to a little bit of muddiness as well sometimes, I find. The Behringer Bigfoot is a very well-balanced um, sound signature and uh, sounds excellent to my ears. The only thing I will say is that uh, it does have a little bit more self-noise, a slightly higher noise floor than the Blue Yeti. This is something that I noticed in my listening tests, and we'll bring that up again in the cons. But uh, overall, uh, I was really quite impressed with the sound quality of the Behringer Bigfoot. Another great uh, pro for the Bigfoot is, of course, its four user selectable pickup patterns, including that all-important stereo mode that ASM artists need. Uh, you have plenty of flexibility and versatility with those four pickup patterns that, again, match directly those available on the Blue Yeti. Uh, another great boon is the zero latency headphone monitoring jack. This is becoming pretty commonplace on most decent USB microphones these days, but nonetheless, it's a valuable inclusion, and I'm glad to see it here. Uh, another useful aspect of the Bigfoot is its plug-and-play compatibility. You don't have to install any drivers. There's no fudging around with OS settings or anything. You've got a USB plug. You plug it in, whether you're on Windows or Mac, it doesn't matter, and it just works just like that. It's very, very easy to set up and use. And finally, the Bigfoot is competitively priced. Like I mentioned in the introduction, the Blue Yeti's MSRP, Manufacturer's Suggested Retail Price, is 130 US dollars, whereas the Bigfoot comes in at just 100 US dollars, undercutting the Yeti by 30 bucks. That's some pretty serious value. Over here on the cons side of things, I really only have two things that I want to bring up, and they're both fairly minor. The first is what I mentioned in the pros section, which is that the Behringer Bigfoot has slightly more audible self-noise than the Blue Yeti. Uh, that noise floor just sits a bit higher. It's not distracting, it's not um, in your face or anything like that, but it is ever so slightly audibly higher than that of the Blue Yeti in my testing. Of course, I can't test empirically, I'm just testing uh, qualitatively, basically, by listening, but to my ear, it certainly sounded that way. Not a major point, but worth noting. The second thing is, again, a very minor nitpick, but the um, zero latency headphone jack for monitoring is really nothing to write home about in terms of its audio output quality. It sounds fine, um, it certainly gets the job done, and it probably matches the audio output on many, you know, motherboards, I would think, but it is audibly noisier than the output on, say, my Motu M2 uh, audio interface, which is to be expected. The Motu M2 is quite a bit more expensive and has much higher quality um, components for the, the audio output, but uh, it's worth noting that there is, at higher volumes, certainly some audible white noise in the output uh, from the headphone jack 
on the Behringer Bigfoot's not distracting but audible. It gets the job done, but it's it's nothing to write home about. So what then is my final verdict on Behringer's Bigfoot microphone? Well, you remember back at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that the blue Yeti dominates this market segment because it excels in three important areas. Quality, versatility, and value. And I said that any competitor, any uh, would-be uh, taker of that crown, uh, has to meet or beat the Yeti in all three of those areas. Well, my friends, that is exactly what Behringer has done with their Bigfoot microphone, and the Yeti had better watch its back. Uh, the Behringer Bigfoot certainly has quality. Uh, it's built like a tank. It sounds excellent with very good vocal clarity, not a whole lot of coloring of the sound. Overall, it just sounds good and clean and clear. Certainly meets the quality bar in the audio department and the physical build quality department. It also has versatility in pretty much all the same ways the Yeti does. It has uh, easy USB plug-and-play functionality. It has that zero latency headphone monitoring jack. And of course, it has four user-selectable pickup patterns, including the all-important stereo mode that makes it so good for ASMR content creation. And finally, the Bigfoot has the Betty... <laughs> and finally, the Bigfoot has the Yeti beat in terms of value. The Yeti's adjusted retail price, as I mentioned, is 130 US dollars. The Bigfoot undercuts that by 30 bucks, coming in at just 100 US dollars. If that's not value, I don't know what is. Taken all together, the Bigfoot is one impressive beast, and I think it may just have what it takes to be the new king. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of another relaxing review. Special thanks, of course, to Behringer for sending over the Bigfoot microphone that we took a look at and tested here today. If you'd like to pick up a Bigfoot for yourself, there are links down in the video description where you can do just that. Also down in the video description, you will find links to our sponsor for this video, Yod, they of the lovely wooden watches. If you would like to browse their selection of wood watches, you'll find a link to do just that down there. Any purchases made through that link come back to support the channel with a portion of your purchase. And don't forget to enter the contest to win your very own Dover 2 or other Yod watch and to receive $50 off your purchase even if you don't win. All those links down in the video description. Please click through and big thanks to Yod for sponsoring this video. And of course, special thanks to each and every one of you for watching. I hope you found this informative. I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Bye for now, my friends.